In a previous project video I showed you how to create a circuit that can adjust the brightness of an LED strip according to the send signals of three useless buttons of a TV remote. Only problem is that the communication between a transmitter and receiver is based on an optical medium, infrared light to be specific, which can easily be blocked. Modern LED strip dimmers though use another more reliable communication medium, known as RF or radio frequency. And even though the utilized IC of this RF remote is unlabeled, there exists a popular and accessible RF IC, the so-called NRF 24L01+. And in this video I will show you how easy it is to use one of those with an Arduino and at the end insert one in the TV remote and one in a newly built receiver circuit to ultimately control my LEDs through radio frequencies. Let's get started. To hook up the Arduino Nano to the RF board, I simply utilized a homemade adapter module and six male jumper wires to establish the mandatory connections according to this schematic and this breakout layout of the board. And while the data pins of the NRF 24L01 are 5V compatible, which means that the Arduino will not destroy them, it still requires a 3.3V power source that connects to pin 1 and 2. It is also recommended to add a big 47 microfarad decoupling capacitor between VCC and ground of the board. And now that the transmitter is complete, I repeated the same wiring procedure for the receiver, but skipped the breadboard parts and directly connected the Arduino to the RF board through female jumper wires. After adding the 3.3 volt power wires as well as the decoupling capacitor, it was time to program the microcontrollers. Since the NRF 24L01 uses the SPI communication protocol, which means it can get a bit difficult to write code for it from scratch, I rather simply downloaded the RF24 library and copied it into the library folder of the Arduino. As a first test I opened the getting started sketch, uploaded unedited to the transmitter, changed the radio number to 1 and then uploaded it to the receiver. By opening the serial monitor of the transmitter and sending over the letter T, we can see that it successfully sends out a number and receives a feedback number from the receiver. And that basically means that the wiring was successful. So it was time to build the actual transmitter, by firstly adding three tactile switches to the breadboard that will pull the pins 4, 5 and 6 to ground to simulate the three TV remote buttons. Writing code for the transmitter is also not that difficult. We just need to remember to define the RF board on pin 7 and 8, as well as the output strength of the signal, the channel it uses and the address of the communication pipe. But you can find detailed information about every command for the RF board in the documentation of the library. Now the loop that I created will send out the code number 100, 101 or 102 depending on which of the three buttons was pushed. The receiver circuit on the other hand will listen whether there is an incoming message and if so save it, present it on the serial monitor, assert whether it is 100, 102 or 101 and thus either turn on slash off the LEDs, decrease the brightness or increase the brightness. After uploading both sketches and pushing the tactile switches, this serial monitor of the receiver outputs the code numbers. And if we take a look at pin 9, which later controls the gate of a MOSFET, we can see how it turns on and off and decreases slash increases its duty cycle. That means everything works fine, but there might be a problem later on because after recreating the transmitter circuit with an Arduino Pro Mini, the circuit still required around 10 mA of current. And thus with an average AAA battery capacity of 1 amp hour, the remote would only last around 4 days in the best case. That is why I added 3 diodes from pin 2 of the Arduino to the button input pins. 
This way I can run a timer which puts the Arduino into sleep mode after 3 seconds and use an interrupt on pin 2 to wake the Arduino up when a button is pushed. Additionally, the nrf 24 l one also supports low power modes, which are activated after sending out each code number. And with those changes and the removal of the SMD LEDs and voltage regulator of the Arduino Pro Mini board, the circuit only requires around 15 microamps in sleep mode, which equals a battery runtime of around 7 years. Now before modifying the TV remotes, let's gather the required components for the receiver circuits and solder them onto a small piece of perf board according to this created schematic. And of course you can find it along with other project information as always in the video description. Once all the parts were connected to one another, I programmed the Arduino through an FTDI breakout, hooked up the LEDs, plugged in the power and gave it one last test with the breadboard transmitter. Since that worked without a problem, I continued by using a slotted screwdriver to slowly pry open my TV remotes. On the inside I removed the rubber keypads to reveal a big switch matrix which connects to an Adam 24 p 20 remote control transmitter. By scraping off the protective layer from the copper traces of the three useless buttons and connecting their breakout points to an oscilloscope, we can see that by pushing the buttons, the input of the microcontroller is pulled down to ground. That basically means we can use them just like we used the tactile switches beforehand, which was confirmed after I did a short test on the breadboard. The only negative aspect is that a couple of other buttons, like the power button, pulls the input to ground as well and thus sends out the code number. But since most of those buttons are useless for me, it still was a good trade-off. So I soldered a wire to each one of the three buttons, redirected them to the underside of the board and connected them to the finalized transmitter circuits according to this schematic. The last thing to do was to remove some of the plastic of the remote's insides, glue the transmitter circuit inside two cavities, hook it all up to the battery terminals and close it all up. And just like that, we successfully modified a TV remote to turn on and off pretty much any 12V DC load we want through radio frequencies. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative! And I will see you next time.